global warming and climate change. A great, a great years when the Philippine archipelago every now and then nararanasan po natin dito sa Philippines. So, basic requirements, the participants who are at the live event can participate. Winners, the first participant to comment the right answer will be considered as the winner which will be monitored. Tunay nga talaga kayong keyboard warriors guys, no? Yan. So ayun, marami na Marami na sa masagot Siguro, i-reveal na natin Hyper reveal Now, yun Yes, the disaster Medyo tricky to ha Medyo tricky to call And now, TC Mayors, are you ready to hear our last but very special guest speaker for this event? Because we are very ready to introduce to you, Ms. Karen Ibasco. Ms. Karen Santos Ibasco finished her bachelor's degree in applied physics, major in instrumentation, and completed her master's degree in applied physics, major in medical physics. She became a college instructor in her alma mater and practiced her field in radiation oncology as a medical physicist. Ms. Karen Santos Ibas Ms. Karen Ibasco is a Filipino physicist and beauty pageant title holder who was crowned Miss Philippines Earth 2017. She represented the Philippines at the Miss Earth 2017 pageant and won its title crown. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome and listen to our beautiful, kind and stunning nature advocate Environment Am Ambassador and our guest speaker, Ms. Karen Ibasco. Let us all give her a round of applause. Here my screen, because I believe it's already my time to speak. There you go. So I will just share my screen so you guys can see it. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes, yes ma'am. All right. Okay, I'll start. Um, I'll just give a brief talk about one planet, one chance, there is no planet B, the smallest app could bring the biggest impact. So I've been doing this kind of talk for quite some time now. And when I was introduced, thank you so much for that very lovely and generous introduction that you just did to me. <laughs> you don't need to mention all of those things, but thank you for a very warm introduction that you just given. Um, today I'm going to give you a brief background of the things I'm going to talk about, about climate change. But I believe the previous speakers have already given you quite some tips about climate change. So I'm just going to wrap it up. I'm just going to give you a quick summary of what they talked about and what other things we can do to help the planet. And I'm going to make it in layman's term as much as possible because I want students to understand what climate change is 
and what are the things that we can do to actually help prevent it. All right, let's start. So how did it all start for me? When I was introduced, everybody heard the word physics. I'm a physics graduate and a lot of people would think when they hear the word physics, they would think about mechanics and acceleration and momentum and so on, which is actually correct. But if we're a physics graduate, the first thing we actually think about when we hear the word physics is energy. I'm not an environmental scientist, so when I planned to join Miss Earth, I wanted to fuse two fields. Like I want to fuse my field of study in physics and environmental sciences. Since I don't know much about it, I did my research. I've learned that climate change is not actually inevitable. It's something that we actually do something. That's why it's happening nowadays. So I furthered my research and learned that one of the biggest things that climate change have, or one of the sources, is because of the emission of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Further, I'm going to explain to you what greenhouse gases are, what we have in the atmosphere, and how it works. So I'm going to explain to you how climate change works. So I thought, if that is the case, and I finished physics, just energy, what is one thing that all of us have access to nowadays? It's electricity. Electricity is connected with energy. And for the Philippines and a lot of countries in the whole world, we still use what we call as fossil fuel. Fossil fuels, once you start burning them, you actually emit so much carbon to the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, which is an example of greenhouse gases. So I got my link. I, I learned that when I actually make an advocacy about conservation of energy and the embrace of renewable energy, it can be a great thing for me because it started with physics and it's connected with electricity, burning of fossil fuels, and then connected with very much what's happening to the planet, which is climate change, with global warming that leads to climate change. If there's a problem, there's a solution. So I learned that it's important for a country and all of us to embrace what we call as renewable energy. That's how it all started for me when I advocated about the conservation of energy and the use of green fuel. I became Miss Earth last 2017, last November, and I was very fortunate enough when I joined because as I spoke about climate change, it opened the eyes of people to really learn more about it, from a field of science to making it in layman's term for people to understand. I started traveling the world from Asia to Europe to North and South, America to Africa and learn that there's so many things that we can actually do for the planet and what are the things those countries are actually doing and what I can learn from them and bring to my country so we can also stop it. Now if I'm going to ask you what is the most serious issue facing our world today or well, according to the World Economic Forum Global Shapers Annual Survey of 2016, they would say that 45% unique responses identify that climate change and destruction of natural resources are actually one of them. And it's very much true and evident. If you look at here in the Philippines, we can feel the effects of climate change because of our geographical location. And later, I'm going to show you how vulnerable the Philippines is when it comes to climate change. Lately, we have seen what happened in the dead. Um, it has intensified the effects of the weather that happened. So it's, it's one thing that we need to see that climate change really is happening to the planet. Now, I know that I am talking to students and I would love for you to give a listening ear for you to further understand how climate change or global warming actually happens. So in our solar system, we understand that there is the sun and our planet is the only so far livable planet that we can see and our, our scientists have researched on. So in our planet, we have what we call as the atmosphere. And in the atmosphere, there is what you call as your greenhouse gases, composed of carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, methane, and so on. So this atmosphere is actually the ones responsible of trapping the heat from the sun. The sun actually gives sunlight to us, but not all the sunlight is absorbed by the planet. Some of it are reflected back in space. But what is absorbed by the planet is actually trapped by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that cause heat in the planet. It's important for us to have heat in the planet because if we do not have any heat, no creature or no living thing will ever be alive in the planet, not even a plant. So the atmosphere and the greenhouse gases are very important when it comes to understanding how the planet can be livable. That's how it was originally created. That is what you call as the greenhouse effect. So it's important for us to understand that because you would further understand how climate change happens. 
And then what happens if you increase the greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere? This is actually important to understand because this is released because of human activities. And later you would see what are the things that we actually do to increase the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. What happens if you increase the greenhouse gases? It only shows that you're also going to increase the amount of heat being trapped in the planet from the sun. And that is what you call as global warming. And global warming leads to climate change. That's why we're experiencing all of this now because of human activities. So I'm going to give you a perfect analogy. I was once asked by um, a scientist, you know, you can explain what climate change is to professionals. How can you explain climate change to a five-year-old kid? And I remembered my professor in college who told us that a good lecturer or a good speaker can actually explain his or her studies even to a five-year-old kid, meaning you always will make terms, we call it layman's term, for them to understand what you're actually trying to do. So it's not just using intellectual um, terms or jargons for you to understand, but making other people understand what you want to say. And that's very important for you to remember. So I thought, no, it's a perfect analogy for me to explain what how climate change happens to a five-year-old kid. And I found the perfect analogy. Did you know that climate change is quite similar to the science of the human body? That's important because for you, for a kid, you have a specific heat in your body. Because without heat, it means you're no longer alive. So it's the same with the planet. But because of the external activities you're doing, so let's say you watch too much TV, you uh, sleep late at night, you eat too much ice cream. Because of those external effects, you can actually have a fever. And you increase your temperature by just one degree Celsius, that only results for you having a fever. And it's like the planet is having a fever. It's as simple as that. So the perfect analogy for me to say what global warming that leads to climate change is, is also the science of the human body. It's very similar with us. Now, for the sources of our greenhouse gases, here are what's actually being released because of what we do as humans. Carbon dioxide is from burning of fossil fuels. As I've said earlier, this is what you call it coal, oil, or natural gases from industries and cars, and also from sources of electricity. In the Philippines, we use a lot of coal because we mine coal and we burn them to produce electricity in the country. The next one is methane from wetlands, agriculture, and landfills. Landfills is where your trash goes. After you throw it in the trash can, it will be collected by the truck and it will go to the landfills and it releases so much methane. Also the global livestock industry, meaning the cows and the things that you eat. So later I'm gonna go to that. The next one we have nitrous oxide. It's a little chemistry, but we need to understand some stuff for us to understand how climate change is happening. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go in depth with the chemistry. Don't worry about that. Nitrous oxide comes from automobile exhaust and industrial activities and so forth. And next, we have what we call as hydrofluorocarbons and other types of carbons that is released to the atmosphere. Hydrofluorocarbons are quite evident in refrigerators and air conditioners. So if you're not using them, turn them off. Turn your air conditioners if you're not using them. And do not always open your refrigerators because there's so much hydrofluorocarbons being released. And it's something that we have to see because they're very powerful. And I believe it stays long in the atmosphere. So it's important for us to know the sources of greenhouse gases. These are the ones responsible trapping the heat in the atmosphere, or sorry, trapping the heat for the planet and they are in the atmosphere. These are some of the biggest sources of our greenhouse gases. We have in industries such as air transport, airplanes. We have other types of transportation such as ship. Um, we have trains, we have cars. And then you also have coal plants for electricity. You have coal mining, industrial agriculture, landfills, fertilization, forest burning, and so on. So as you can see, we have a lot of sources of greenhouse gases and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are actually increasing very fast. That's why you can feel a lot of the heat in the planet already. Now, scientists believe that gas released from the industries and agriculture are really adding to the natural effect of the Earth's atmosphere of trapping the energy from the sun. And this human activities, when you burn fossil fuels, you release so much of the carbon dioxide, which is the main greenhouse gas for global warming. Now, you can see here the top 10 emitters of greenhouse gases. We're not here because we're a developing country, but it's also good that we're not here. 
Number one, of course, is China, followed by USA, India, Russia, and Japan. These are um, first world countries that have developed so much with technology. And there is a backfire as well if we do not know how to balance technology or wanting to advance so much of the technology, there is a side effect to it. And if we don't know that, this is actually what's happening to the planet and they just emit so much greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Now, I want you to remember three things. Three things that are very much true or are facts for us to see that global warming or climate change really is happening to the planet. The first one is that the Earth is really warming. That is true. The global average temperature of the Earth's surface has increased by about 0.85 degrees Celsius in the last 100 years. It is during pre-industrial times, they compared it before. So they got what we call as a temperature anomaly or the difference during that time and now. And there is an increase of temperature in degrees Celsius. For a lot of students, they would think, you know, 0.85 is not that high. But if you look at it in a global scale, 0.85 degrees Celsius is very high. And I believe it's already increased. We're almost one degree Celsius already, not even just 0.85. And you can see here that based on the data that was taken by scientists, and they did a lot of experiments to it, different fields, it really shows that the world is really warm and it's very alarming. I'm gonna show you later what are the limits of our global average temperature can be, and we cannot exceed that. You can see here, there's a graph. So you can see in the x-axis, you have the year from 1880 to 2016. And in the y-axis, you would see the temperature anomaly or what we call as a carbon dioxide concentration. So you can see that's very much related when it comes to temperature anomaly or carbon dioxide concentration. Meaning, I just want to explain it, that when the carbon dioxide concentration actually increased, it also, it also shows that the temperature also increases. So when you increase when we actually release so much of carbon dioxide because of human activities that goes to the atmosphere, we are actually increasing the trapped heat from the sun in the planet. That's what actually this graph is showing to us and it's no longer linear. So it's quite um, alarming for us to understand. So I'm not gonna further with this graph, but this graph only shows that the temperature is very much connected with the carbon dioxide concentration. So the earth really is warming. Next one, the sea level is rising. It's important for us to understand that the planet is composed mostly of water and it's not land. And once sea level is rising, that's very alarming, especially for us in the Philippines because we are covered with water. So high temperatures and extreme weather events and higher sea levels are all linked to a warming climate and could have a drastic effect on the world's region. Since 1900s, the sea levels have risen by an average of 19 centimeters globally. Once again, this is on the global scale, so when we talk about increase of 19 centimeters, that is a huge deal. For a global scale, for the whole Earth to increase for about 19 centimeters globally, that is very big. So it only shows, it also shows that the sea level is already rising. So meaning that once the Earth is warming, the sea level is rising because of what's being melted in the planet. And the next one we would see here, that the Arctic sea ice in 1984 to 2012 has decreased for about this size already. Meaning, the water is already being melted, or the ice, sorry, is already being melted in the Arctic sea ice. And the Arctic sea ice is very important for the balancing of temperature in the planet, the Arctic and the Antarctica. So here, from a perspective, from a satellite, they actually saw that the ice has already lessened or melted by this amount, and this is the only area left by 2012. So it is melting, the ice is melting, the sea level is rising, and our temperature is really increasing. Leonardo DiCaprio said, the science is clear, definitely, but the future is not. So if you want to further research or watch a great documentary, it's called Before the Flood by Leonardo DiCaprio. In this film, he actually did a lot of research and he talked to a lot of professionals from different fields. You know, what is climate change, how it happens. And then he talked to different professionals scientifically that climate change really is happening. They did a lot of research and experiments and all the data and results are coinciding into one. that climate change really is happening and it's not good for the planet. Because now we're experiencing 
a lot of effects in the planet with just nearly one degree Celsius of the global average temperature. Can you imagine if you will have kids already, your generation, if nothing is going to do something to the planet, can you imagine what are the drastic effects that will happen to your kids in the future? And it's not good. So I'm going to show you here the impacts of climate change if ever humans are not going to do anything. Let's say now we're about 0.8 to almost 1 degree Celsius warmer than pre-industrial times. Meaning the pre-industrial times um, is where machineries were created. That's why it makes our lives easier. But then because of the machineries, we actually maximize the use of coal, oil, and natural gases that is responsible for releasing so much carbon to the atmosphere. So what happens is that because we use so much of this, it actually increased so much if the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere already. Okay, sorry. In 20 to 30 years from now, <clears throat> harsher impacts of 2 degrees Celsius will happen if no one actually changes. Sorry. <clears throat> so, can you imagine 20 to 30 years from now, what are you doing already? If we don't do anything, that's going to be more than 1 degree Celsius and that's going to be 2 degrees Celsius already. Sorry, I'm not feeling very well, but I don't have COVID. <laughs> there. <clears throat> if the world does not act now, it's going to be 4 degrees Celsius likely by the end of the century. And it's not good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the end of the century is the end of the 100 years. Here. Let's go to this one, the Paris Agreement. <clears throat> this happened last December of 2015, and it took effect last November 4, 2016. <clears throat> the Paris Agreement is very important because it is when all the world leaders have come together to actually make a pact in which all the countries would lessen their greenhouse gases. And do you know what they talked about? The planet cannot increase more than 2 degrees Celsius, and they further the limit for the planet not to increase more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. We're already near the target. The planet is already almost 1 degree Celsius and we cannot exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius. And we are talking about a global scale. Meaning, many countries should cut their carbon emissions very rapidly in the next century. <coughs> or else, the planet is going to go through a lot of things. And recently, the COP26 happened in Glasgow in October 31 to November 12. And this is where the countries actually talked about <clears throat> what are the further things to limit, or no, what are the further things we can do to limit the excess or the release emissions of these greenhouse gases. Because so far, a lot of countries do not like to follow. And it's not good. It's not going to be good for our future as well. <coughs> Here. We're going to see the vulnerability of the Philippines. The Philippines is very prone to climate change because of our geographical location and so many other more factors. But one thing I can say is that we can't do anything because we are <clears throat> located in the planet this way. So it's one thing that we need to protect our planet. So the Philippine brass, third among most countries at risk of disasters, followed by other countries. But we actually increased for about nine, I believe, in a 12 risk report of 2019. Which is actually a good thing. But one thing that I can say is that we actually experienced so much of this climate change. And recently, we experienced the intensified effect of Typhoon Odette. And we're very, very prone to typhoons in the Philippines. So here, I want you to see um, the climate change. Actually, one of the biggest victims is the waters. So you can see before, you can see the corals so colorful. And after quite some time, they actually died and they bleached. This happens because of ocean acidification and the temperature increase of the water. Because the planet actually increases temperature, the water also increases the temperature and the corals actually die. And also, the water also absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And because the planet or humans are actually releasing so much of its greenhouse gases, this type of carbon dioxide or this carbon dioxide actually is absorbed by the water as well and causes ocean acidification that leads to the death of a lot of corals. 
Now, what is the importance of that? Corals are important because corals are the ones that the fishes actually do spawning and feeding. So if the corals die, a lot of marine species would also die. And we as humans actually depend on a lot of marine species for us to be alive because we fish. And a lot of our fisher folk also depend their livelihoods on that. So it's not a good thing when this happens. And let's talk about plastic pollution. I know a lot of people have heard of plastic pollution. Plastic pollution, we're very prone in the Philippines with this one because we're ranked third among a lot of countries that is uh, a plastic polluter in the whole world. So it's not something to um, take it lightly. It's something that we have to address. So you can see here sea turtles, um, seabirds, and also whale sharks actually, and so many more, uh, what we call this, um, marine creatures actually eat plastics in the oceans. They eat them because they don't know what they are. They think they're food, so they just eat them. But what's sad about that is that plastics do not compose and they're not biodegradable. So when the marine creatures eat them, they die because their bodies cannot digest plastics. But what's sad about this is that the plastics actually just go back to the oceans after the bodies of the sea creatures decompose. So can you imagine the life cycle of this plastic just going back to the oceans after being eaten by marine creatures? What's sad about the, this is that <clears throat> They may not be biodegradable, but they degrade into small pieces called as microplastics. And these microplastics are easily eaten by marine creatures more than this kind of plastics. So it's not good. And what happens is that if these creatures actually eat them, we can eat them in the long run. And there are studies in the Philippines that there are specific fishes that microplastics are already found in them. And you don't know you're actually eating your plastics already. So everything that we do is actually backfiring to humanity already and we're eating these plastics. And plastics are not good for the body. There are many studies as well that show what are the side effects of us eating plastics. There you go. Now you've seen some of the causes. I'm just going to give you simple solutions that you can do even from your houses. So how can we help? As simple as conservation of energy, meaning if you're not using your lights, your computers, turn them off. Do not leave them on standby mode. And there are what we call as phantom loads. Phantom loads are devices in which you think it's turned off, but it's still consuming a lot of energy. Um, example of this is uh, your microwave. Some of the microwaves actually have clocks in it. So if you're not using them, just simply unplug it because it's still consuming energy even though you're not using your microwaves. Next one is reduction of your food waste. Um, as much as possible, do not buy something or do not cook something that you cannot finish. Finish all your food on your table. Can you imagine how much green gases were already released before that food was already on your table and you're just going to throw it away and increase so much of the methane in the landfills? So as much as possible, reduce your food waste. Diversify your diet, meaning eat less meat and more vegetables. I'm not telling you to stop eating meat. I'm not a vegetarian. I am not also a vegan, but I respect those people who are. But if I'm going to share it to my audiences, I want them to learn how to diversify your diet, meaning eat less meat and more vegetables. I'm going to give you a tip. Did you know that if you actually say no to a burger, you're actually helping the planet? You know why? Because the global livestock industry produces more greenhouse gases compared to all cars, trains, planes, and ships combined. So meaning, when you don't eat so much of the burger you're helping the planet you can still eat burger i'm not telling i'm not telling you to stop i just want you to lessen eating less meat so let's say you're eating four times a week of a burger just make it once a week when you eat your burger and you're actually helping the planet the next one conserve your water water is important because water is life once we do not have water that's time you would experience how water is very important so just completely turn off your knobs for your faucets um, for you to conserve your water and it's important for us to have clean water so i'm going to show you some of the things for us to have clean water as well protect your forest forest uh, is important because the trees actually absorb so much of the carbon dioxide that we release and human activities are being released and they actually release to us oxygen that we breathe not only that they actually hold the soil and they absorb so much of the water when flood comes in there, there, there are so many benefits to having great forest and it's very linked to how to protect the planet. The next one is 
If your places that you're gonna go to is just near, learn to walk, bike, and use your trains. I'm not gonna tell you to stop using your cars because I also have a car, but if you can walk, bike, and use trains, if the places you're just gonna go to is near, why not? You're actually helping the planet by not releasing or burning gas from your engines in your cars. Next one is for us to refuse plastic. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna say this because a lot of people have a negative tendency about, about plastics. Not all plastics are bad. There is what we call as unnecessary and necessary plastics. The thing that I ask you to refuse using plastic on is the unnecessary plastics. This is what we call a single-use plastic, such as um, plastic cups, so plastic bottles, so try to use your tumblers. I know a lot of you guys have tumblers. So even though you go out, um, it's important for you to use your tumblers and put your water in it, put your coffee in it, so you don't buy plastic bottles that contains all of this condiments, or sorry, your, your, your drink. It's important for you to use them. Don't just store them, wash them, and use them. Don't just collect your tumblers because once you actually use the tumblers, you're helping not to consume so much of that plastic bottles in the market. Next one, use your metal or bamboo straws um, as much as possible. Refuse the use of single-use plastic straws. I know plastic straws is a huge thing because it's so convenient for us, but I cannot continue with convenience if I know some creatures are actually dying because of the plastics I'm actually consuming. So if you don't even have metal straws or bamboo straws, just simply don't use straws if you're going to drink something. You can actually drink something without straws. So it's one way to help the planet. The next one is using of eco bags. This is important when you shop or when you do supermarket groceries. Eco bags are durable and you can use them so on. So you're not consuming single-use plastics when you use tumblers, straws such as metal straws and the use of eco bags. Actually, I remember because when I continued my advocacy with this one, I was shopping and I totally forgot my echo bag in my car. Before I buy the item, I literally went back to my car, used my echo bag, placed it there so I won't use any paper bags or plastic bags from the shopping that I went to. That's how I do my shopping. I always use an echo bag. There's a small echo bag inside my bag, so I won't use any paper bags from the straws or plastic in the stores or any plastic bags. And next one, we can also do recycling of plastics. Um, this one is an example of the plastic solutions. They actually make eco bricks. This eco bricks is putting all of the plastics together inside a used plastic bottles. So don't get me wrong, I'm not encouraging you to use plastic bottles. But if ever you already have plastic bottles at home, you can stuff it with other kinds of plastics and then they can be used as eco bricks. Eco bricks are used um, as exchange for hollow blocks for locals housing and I've seen people done using eco bricks to actually create walls in their garden and also creating even chairs for their garden so I actually have photos of that with me with different companies so it's an important thing for us to see that you're actually putting the plastic somewhere else and you're not throwing them in the ocean that's what it actually shows so it's important for us to actually do this not to increase Echo bricks, but to lessen the plastic that go back to the ocean. So you can see here when you actually do echo bricks, you can see so much um, consumption of plastic you actually do every day, and you try to lessen them as much as possible. And we have we'll also have recycling centers such as the Plaf. The Plaf, you can follow them on Instagram. They actually have more followers now because of the whole pandemic thing with the whole face mask. But Plaf is a French company. It's a recycling centers where you can put your, your single-use plastic or plastics from your house and you can just simply drop them off at Plaf. They have different dropping points and they recycle the plastics for you. And actually, we also have what we call it the project with WWF and Green Space. It's called the Project Soil Mate. So, kapag may plastics, there's also an issue when it comes to biodegradable and that is what you call as the trashes inside your houses. So what they actually do is they can actually collect all the biodegradable trash so it won't go to the landfills anymore. So you can actually just simply book um, a grab, they call it that that, you can just simply book a bucket and then they would simply give you a bucket from your houses and you would um, do um, some kind of 
um, composting inside your houses and then they would actually receive the bucket and they are going to be the ones to do um, the things that have to be done so it won't go to the landfills anymore. So there are ways for us to actually help the planet even from our houses. So it's a good thing. You can download it. It's an app. It's called Soilmate. Um, I believe it's available on Google Store and Apple Store. And then, of course, there are three things that will not be gone. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. Reuse what you can, such as your reusable plastics or reusable things if you can. Reduction of your consumption of electricity, reduction of your consumption of plastics, and recycle them as much as possible. So these are the things that I teach people and I know that as I teach you, you can teach other people as well, such as people in your houses. Because sometimes small things really start from the house and when it's done with so many people, it's going to have a really big effect. Educate others afterwards. You can educate the people in your houses and you can do it together. So now what I do is I'm connected with World Food Pond for Nature Philippines and one of their ambassadors. And we focus on four pillars. We focus on food security, wildlife conservation, water management, and climate adaptation. So, I'm sorry, it went back. Okay, and there you go. Here for wildlife conservation, we actually protect these creatures in the planet. We protect camarels in Mindoro, whale sharks in Donsol, and Irrawaddy dolphins in Palawan because they're endangered species in the Philippines. We try to protect them because as we protect biodiversity, we actually protect and help balance the ecosystem in the country. And of course, we have movements just like a plastic. It's very direct. Uh, we, as much as possible, we refuse single use of plastics. So that's we, what we actually share in this movement. Let's avoid single use plastics. And of course, we have every single year, we have a countdown to Earth Hour. Earth Hour is done every March, so this March we're going to have another Earth Hour. I hope you guys can participate with us. It's an event where we encourage everyone to turn off their lights for one hour because um, we show here the importance of conservation of energy. So we always go beyond the hour, not just within the hour, making people understand how important conservation of energy is and not just simply turning off your lights for one hour. But making people understand that when you conserve your energy even beyond the hour, it helps so much of the planet. And I've also worked with Climate Change Commission. It's a department in the government where I was sent to New York to represent the Youth Climate Summit or the Philippines in this summit last 2019 before the whole pandemic happened. <clears throat> I went there with Greta Thunberg opening the whole summit for us. And I was very fortunate to represent the Philippines and I've seen different causes of climate change and different people in different fields that are saying that climate change really is happening. So we have things to do, we have things to say, we have things to act on for this climate change to really lessen its impact on us with our generation and with the generations to come. As I end, um, I just want, you know, Greta Thunberg, I just want to quote her with what she said. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic and I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. I want you to act and I want you to act like you would in a crisis. And I want you to act like your house is on fire because it truly is. And where I end, one more slide. I was asked this question when I won, you know, they asked me who or what do you think is the biggest enemy of Mother Earth and why? And with all my heart, I answered this question, not just for the sake of winning a crown, but because I really understood and I believed in that answer that I just gave. I said that the, I believe the real problem in this world is not climate change. The real problem is us because of our ignorance and apathy. What we have to do is to start changing our ways, to start recalibrating our minds and redirecting ourselves because together as a global community, our micro efforts will have a macro effect to help save the planet. Simple as that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Karen, for that wonderful sharing of your expertise with RTC mayors. At this moment, we understand that climate change is affecting not only humans, but our wonderful planet. The late French President Francois Hollande once said, We have a single mission, and that is to protect and to hand on the planet to the next generation. Tama ba, Clyde? I agree, Diana. And with that, we shall now proceed with the Q&A portion with Ms. Karen. So if you guys have questions with you, you can queue in on our comment section or you may open your mics. Yes. 
Let's call on Miss Alili Pardinas. So good afternoon, po, Miss Karen. So my question is: between cutting down trees and the emission of greenhouse gases, what would you like to focus on eliminating and why? Thank you. Hmm. Cut, sorry, cutting down trees and what's the other one? The emission of greenhouse gases. Ah, okay. Um. I can't choose any because both of them are important. You know, I don't want to cut down trees because they absorb so much of carbon in the atmosphere, which is what they absorb is what you release from other human activities, which is the emission of so much greenhouse gases. So I won't choose either of them because both of them are important. We cannot continually cut down trees because of companies that you want to increase. If you want to cut down trees, you have to build more. You have to make things carbon neutral. So if you want to cut down trees, you have to continually plant more trees in the future because it really takes so much time before it grows or before they grow. At the same time, I'm not going to choose because cutting emission or cutting emission of greenhouse gases are very important in a wide range of uh, industries. So both of them are very vital nowadays for us to plant more trees and for us to continually cut the emission of greenhouse gases in different industries. Thank you, Ms. Karen. So, note that, PCA Mayors. Next, we have Mecca Margin or Mr. Mandapat. Go on, Mr. Mandapat. Good afternoon, po, Ms. Karen Nebasco. So, my question is, what do you think will happen if we don't act immediately to stop climate change? I have a slide. I mentioned it earlier. Um, if we do not act now, bad things are going to happen to the planet definitely because according to the paris agreement we even lowered the limit to only 1.5 degrees celsius and if we do not do anything in 20 to 30 years i gave i believe more than two degrees celsius is going to be really bad for us and at the end of the century it's going to be four degrees celsius so the things that you're experiencing now are nothing compared to what the future generation will experience if we do not act now that's why the COP26 is very important. It's actually encouraging countries to renew what we call as their National Determined Contributions or NDCs. These are the contributions in accordance with their countries to the Paris Agreement. Meaning, ano yung kailangan i-cut down sa isang country para umabot tayo sa limit ng 1.5. It's going to be really bad. A lot of people are already dying when it's just almost near 1 degree Celsius. And can you imagine how much impact it would have to the planet and to people and to wildlife if we're not going to do anything it's going to be more than two degrees celsius and it's going to be really bad for all of us i agree thank you miss yes. karen next we have kenneth hernandez go on kenneth good afternoon miss karen ebasco here's my question Paul. As a candidate crowned as Miss Earth Philippines 2017, what do you think is the biggest environmental that we are facing right now? Thank you. Hmm. The biggest environmental threat we're experiencing is climate change itself. Um, climate change is in general, we, we're experiencing it as a whole humanity. It's not just one country, it's the whole planet. And it's one thing that we need to understand. There's so many branches. That's why climate change is happening. And it's one thing that we as a global community are experiencing. And we have to do our part to really cut it down. That's why there is also a branch in the United Nations where they encourage all of these countries, all of us human beings, to actually do our part. Because if we don't, definitely we will be the ones to suffer. And we do not want that. And we actually do this for you guys, for your generation. It's it's not already for us because you're going to outlive us in the future. And you're going to experience all of these effects if you're not going to do anything now. Thank you, Ms. Karen, for answering that question. Next, Ms. Lovely Nantes. Good afternoon, Ms. Ibasco. So here is my question. Po. Do you think overpopulation also contributes to the pandemic? To the planet's problem yes it's a factor thank you lovely for that question yes actually overpopulation is also a problem because overpopulation only shows that you're going to consume more energy you're going to consume uh, more plastics you're going to consume more of those things so it is a factor there's actually a study if you want to further on that 
there are studies in the United Nations, they have articles and papers that actually show what are the factors that are connected to climate change. Even with gender, they actually have that. There are in-depth studies about climate change, and definitely I can say that overpopulation is one of them. And we're actually um, a lot when it comes to talk about overpopulation in the Philippines, and we're already prone to climate change, and we have a lot of population here continually increasing, so we have to maximize it wisely. Thank you, Ma'am Karen. And last, we have Marjean. Good afternoon, Ms. Karen. Here's my question. How does climate change affect our natural resources? Hmm. Climate change affects our natural resources because climate change actually intensifies our weather. So let's say... Recently, we have a typhoon of death. How does it affect natural resources? It destroys them. Because of the intensified effects of our weather, it will destroy them in the long run. So it will not just destroy your properties or kill people. It will destroy natural resources and also kill a lot of wildlife. So it's important for us to understand that we're doing this for the planet, not just for us. We're doing it other, for other creatures as well. But mainly, we're doing this because we want to save humanity. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Thank you, Ms. Karen. And I think we have another question from Yes, Facebook. from the comment section. Yes. Okay. It's from Carl Aguilar. His question is, do you really believe that people's apathy is one of the reasons why our nature is constantly getting destroyed? And can you give us some tips po, on how can we boost the interest of other people when it comes to our environment? Thank you so much po, in advance. Okay, thank you for that question. Apathy, other word for apathy is indifference, meaning people just don't care. It is one of the main reasons because if you don't care about something, you're not going to act on it. It's as simple as that. That's why when I learned about climate change, when I entered this environmental journey of mine, I didn't stop. Because once I learned about it, I knew that I have a voice to really make people understand that we have to care for the planet. I'm the perfect example of everyone because I didn't care about the planet before as well. But when I was um, introduced or when I became aware, I knew that I had a part to play to help people understand. And when you understand and start caring and not being apathetic to it, you would start making a difference and act on it, even though you're just an individual. So it's important. One of the things we can do is that um, you watch uh, different documentaries Leonardo DiCaprio did a great thing. It's, it's free on YouTube. You can start watching that and you can really see that these things are happening to the planet. And I do not want us to experience the hard part of what happened to the people in Palawan, in Bohol, that just in Cebu, that experienced a lot of deaths because of the typhoon death. But if we will not do anything, these are the worst case scenario. Our lives will be at risk and you do not want to experience that just for you to change your ways. So if you can change now, why not? Sometimes the problem of humanity is that if we don't experience bad things in life, we don't start changing. So you do not want to experience it the hard way just for you to change. Because a lot of people are already experiencing it, especially the people in the provinces and the people who are living in the coastal communities. So their lives are at risk. It's as simple as that. It's not just your properties or your future your life would stop um, this point of time if something happens to you and you do not want to experience that just for you to change your race. So it's one thing I want people to understand and to open their eyes that, you know, things like this really happen and we have to start doing our part. We we'll start watching um, documentaries in Netflix and that me. On YouTube, you can watch watching simple videos. There are videos on TikTok. I know you guys love TikTok. I also browse stuff on TikTok. And it's good because they have a lot of topics to really show that climate change is happening. And we can just, you know, simply share these things and people can have an open heart and open mind. And hopefully, they would also be on the same boat as us to help change the planet. Thank you, ma'am. And po meron pa pong isa from Sean Makabilen. My okay. question is, the biggest global and environmental problem in the present are ignored and underestimate. How can you apply your knowledge as a Miss Earth Philippines 2017 to raise the issues? Um, I'm, I'm maximizing my, my platform after Miss Earth. 
I maximized it by working with the government, with the Climate Change Commission, if ever they need me for projects. At the same time, I'm an ambassador for the World Wide Fund for Nature. So I continued my field with different, sorry, NGOs and the government sector in which I can be of help. You know, I can only do so much. I can spread what I know, but I'm continually increasing what I know about it because it's very limited. You see, there is... There are fields. I want to encourage, I'm talking to students. If you're interested, you can take your bachelor's degree in environmental sciences. You can take your master's degree, your doctorate degree, and you can focus on one area about environmental sciences in which you can do to help. So what I do is just maximize my field. If I'm going to be given a chance in the future, just at the back of my mind, I'm going to take a mother master's to make it more credible of the things I speak about. So as of now, I just maximize my platform, study the things I have to study, become a good advocate, and really apply my talk. But if you really want to make it serious, you can go into further studies. You can be one of the scientists that actually studies this and also raise your voices for people to understand. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Yes. And I think we have last question. Yes. It's boss. from Rowan. Madaming last question. <laughs> yes. Sorry po. Madami po kasing katanungan ng ating mga nasa comment section. Okay. Masyado po silang curious po. Okay. And it's fun that they are so responsive. And okay, the last good. question is from Ms. Rowan Marcelino. Her question is, can we say that the rapid change and development of technology is the main cause of climate change? Uh, I can see, I can't say it's, it's specifically the main cause, but you can see that one of the main causes, one of the main causes is the emission of greenhouse gases and the emission of greenhouse gases is connected with the advancement of technology. But there are also other factors such as overpopulation and so on. But definitely it's one of the biggest factors. Now, a lot of people would ask if that is the cost for advancement of the technology, how can we make technology still fit to help the planet? Actually, we can still do that with technology. We just need to use it wisely, how we can counter effect uh, what we're doing or currently doing right now. So technology plays a big impact, but technology, the same as money, is what we call as moral neutral. So technology is not bad. Technology in itself is not evil. What's bad is that the humans behind controlling or creating technology, it's how you handle technology, it's how you handle your money. So we can understand that these things are not bad, but how you handle them is very important. So we can still do our part to actually counteract what we're doing while we still have a chance. Because some scientists say that scientists say that if we reach a specific amount of temperature, it will be irreversible for us to change it. That's what they actually say. So we have to start doing our ways as much as we're not yet there. And as much as we can do to also reverse the effects of what we're doing to the planet. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Also, thank you, TC Mayor, sa inyo mga katanungan. At sana ay nasagot ni Ms. Karen ito. And of course, we are very thankful to you, Ms. Karen, for joining us today and giving us knowledge about your advocacy. And for that, um, we present uh, this appreciation to you for sharing us your expertise with us, TCM Mayors. This certificate of appreciation is hereby awarded to Ms. Karen Ibasco for her invaluable insight, experience, and expertise during the three-day event, One Planet, One Chance, There's No Planet B, and the smallest act could bring the biggest impact. Given this 7th of January in the year of our Lord, 2022 at Thy Covenant Montessori School, City of the Geek. Signed, by Mezzarina Bonrostro, overall head chairman of the event, Ma Marilyn De Los Santos, senior high school head coordinator, Ma Marlene De Beltran, assistant principal, Mr. Ronnie Bayod, assistant school director, and Ma'am Fe Ami B. Estella, our president CEO of ECNS. But before that, are there any last words or inspirational message that you want to leave for our TCA mayors, Ms. Karen? I just want to thank you for inviting me and I want to encourage everyone because as young as you are, you can learn so much and you can do so much. So continually maximize the thing that you're learning. Don't stop wanting to learn and enjoy it. 
you know, because one day you would continue what we do in helping the planet. So it can be one of your advocacies. You can actually further your studies with STEM and take the science field and further your field, perhaps having a further studies, your master's, your PhD, to actually focus on these things. So I would love to encourage you to continually do what you do, especially as individuals, as young as you are, you can do so much, even starting from your homes and sharing your words to your fellow classmates. And we can all make a huge difference together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Karen, for that wonderful sharing of your expertise with our TC mayors. Again po, maraming maraming salamat, Ms. Karen, for joining us today. Madami tayong natutunan na naman, TC mayors, like yung simpleng pagbukas ng refrigerator natin can contribute to the greenhouse effect. Meron din palang categories ang plastics, the good plastics and the bad plastics. So, hindi lang yon, hindi lang lahat ng plastics ay agad nakakasama sa environment. Kasama rin sa ating natutunan na kapag nag-lesson tayo ng pagkain ng meat, ay we are actually helping and cleaning and serving our or sa saving our planet. Kaya naman, we are very much lucky in having Miss Karen as part of our event. From the bottom of all our hearts, we are very much grateful, Miss Karen. Yes, Clyde, evidently our event is a success, TC Mayors. And of course, let us not forget the main reason kung ga, bakit nga ba successful ang event na ito at ang dahilan kung bakit natin ito napagtagumpayan. We would like to thank our Almighty God above all kasi truly without Him, this event would not have been possible. Yes, truly, this event had been a successful one. But before we finally end our event, please don't forget to follow our official social media accounts to always be updated with our events and school activities. We have our Facebook page, TCMS, Instagram and Twitter at TCMS2007, and we have our YouTube channel, The Covenant Montessori School. Again, Facebook page, TCMS, Instagram and Twitter at TCMS2007, YouTube channel, The Covenant Montessori School. And please, don't forget that TCMS is now accepting early enrollment from NKP to senior high school for school year 2022 to 2023. For inquiries and referral, please contact 0288247451 or you may reach us via email at admissionstcms at gmail.com or visit our official FB page which is the CMS. So please make sure to comment Check the comment section of our live broadcast dahil nakapin po dyan ang ating link for the early enrollment. At para naman sa ating mga incoming senior high school students, we offer four academic track strands. Yes, you heard it right. We offer four academic track strands. Ang science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, other otherwise known as STEM. Of course, we also have accounting business management or ABM. And next, we have Humanities and Social Sciences, which is Humes. And lastly, we have the General Academic Strand, or GAS. So what are you waiting for? Join us now. Be part of our covenant and family. Be a TCMA. This has been Clyde Bertusha. And this has been Rihanna K. Nakamoto. Again, TC Mayors, please don't forget to check the pinned comment in our live broadcast for our early enrollment. And that is it, TC Mayors. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong suporta. God bless us all and to Him be all the glory. Bye! Bye, guys! We would like to thank the following sponsor. Green Magic Stuff Toys, quality check and affordable price. Remand the band courier service. Go where your heart beats. Gideon Stella Photography. Mr. Randall Santa Maria. Mrs. Fe Amistella.